Did you know that Hulk 181 is worth more than Hulk 1? In fact, it's worth more than Marvel Comics number 1. How can this be, you might ask? A mid-grade copy of Hulk 181 can be had for a few thousand dollars. Hulk 1, tens of thousands, and Marvel 1, hundreds of thousands. To explain, I brought on my friend and Overstreet advisor, Greg Holland. Well, we've got to think about the overall impact on the market, right? all the copies of hulk 181 all the copies of hulk one all the copies of marvel comics number one if we could imagine a scenario where you could somehow gather up all the cgc graded copies of hulk 181 would that be a better stack of comics to own than all the graded copies of hulk number one because we're talking about very different numbers of copies in those stacks. We'll have a giant stack, we'll have a short stack. The values are different, but the stacks are different. Yeah, that's a great concept. It really reminds me of stock prices um, and how that relates to market capitalization. For example, I recently looked up two stocks. So I looked up Netflix and that's selling for just under $400 per share. And then looked up Amazon, which is at about 140 per share. So roughly about a third as much. So some people might conclude that Netflix is worth more than Amazon, which of course isn't true because Amazon has more than 20 times the amount of shares that Netflix does. Amazon is well over a trillion dollars in total value in market cap, while Netflix, it's right at 170 billion right now. It's, which would you rather have? It's that, which would you rather? And that's a fun thing to do in collecting is would you rather have A or B? Would you rather have this or that? Uh, and in this concept, it would really be the question, would you rather have all of this or all of that? You know, would you rather have all the Netflix shares or all the Amazon shares? Would you rather have all the CGC graded copies of Hulk 181 or all the CGC graded copies of Hulk 1? Yeah, gotcha. Well, I'll tell you what, if you and I owned all the shares of Netflix, I would suggest them having a Greg and Kesson show to talk about the most nerdy aspects of comic books. I'm sure that would be a hit. It would probably raise up the, uh, the stock price. Greg, you have convinced me that this could be a useful concept for comic investors and collectors. Um, but there is some details in terms of how this is calculated, Greg. And I don't want you to go into a ton of detail, but could you provide like a one minute explanation of how you were able to develop these market caps for comic books? Well, the thing that we have in the stock market is that every share is the same price. We don't have that in the comic book world. This high grade copy is worth a lot more than that lower grade copy, even though it's the same comic. Overall, we could get an average. And we could say, well, the average CGC graded copy of Hulk 181 uh, is so many dollars. But we know that a high grade Hulk 181 is going to be worth a lot more than a low grade. So we would want to focus in on that average. And so what I've done is I've adjusted the average market cap uh, to take into account the age of the comic and created an estimated market cap. So an AMC would be an average market cap but an EMC would be an estimated market cap. And so what I actually focus on on my website is that EMC, because it does make more sense to give credit to the very high grades, uh, getting very high dollars when they do come to market uh, for the older comics. Speaking of EMC, what would happen if you squared the C? <laughs> well, the comic would burn up as you approach <laughs> the speed of light. So. At that point, you've lost all the value. Okay, yeah, we, we don't want to go there then. Greg, I think what many of the viewers are interested in is seeing if you apply this, apply this um, EMC to comic books, what would the top books be? Here's your top 25 estimated market cap. They are from slabdata.com, but you can get right to these this list at cgcemc.com. Number 25, Fantastic Four, number 48. Uh, for those that don't know, that's the first appearance of Silver Surfer. Uh, there are about 9,400 copies graded. The average grade at this point is about a 5.3 or 5.4. And we know from the sales that happen regularly that that would be about $1,350. So what we're talking about is 9,400 copies times 
$1,350. And the result would be $12,700,000. If we stopped there, you would have the AMC amount. But what we're doing is we're adjusting because we know that very high grade copies of comic books from the 1966 uh, will sell for an additional premium above very high grade copies from the mm -hmm. 80s or very high grade copies from uh, even the 70s. And so the adjusted, the estimated market cap that goes with number 25, Fantastic Four number 48, is $19,200,000. Number 24, All Star Comics number eight which is from 1942. For those that don't know, that's the first appearance of Wonder Woman. Very interesting to me just at this point to say that we are seeing very similar market caps. We were comparing Netflix and Amazon and saying they're nowhere near similar uh, in their market caps. But in this, we're talking about similarity between the first appearance of Silver Surfer and the first appearance of Wonder Woman. Number 23 is Showcase. Number four. Number 22 is Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. Number one, uh, first printing. Number 21, Fantastic Four. Number five. Number 20 is Avengers. Number one. Number 19 is Detective Comics. Number 31. Everybody may or may not know that that is the third time that Batman appeared on the cover of a comic book. So he first appeared in Detective 27. He was not on the cover of number 28. He was on the cover of number 29. He was not on the cover of number 30, but he was on the cover of number 31. And another thing that number 31 has, we're not gonna find number 29 in our top 25. The second time Batman appears on the cover is not in the top 25. The third time is. And it's because a lot of people prefer the cover art on Detective Comics number 31. He's looming in the background over a castle going up a hill. I think it's been done as an homage many times since uh one of the most famous one is batman number 227 where neil adams did an homage to detective number 31 uh, but detective number 31 came out in 1939. number 18 is amazing spider-man number 129. number 17 is daredevil number one 1964. number 16 is flash comics number one but we're back at 1940. Number 15 is Journey into Mystery, number 83. Number 14 is Tales of Suspense, number 39. Number 13 is Giant Size X-Men, number one. Number 12 is Marvel Comics, number one, 1939. This is one that you had already alluded to. $340,000 is an estimate for the average copy, and the average copy is about a 4.3 CGC grade. But with only 68 copies graded, we multiply our 68 by our $340,000 each, and we get a total of $59 million. We have made a huge jump from number 13 to number 12. Number 11 is Fantastic Four, number one from 1961. Number 10, we're in the top 10, Incredible Hulk, number one with a total value roughly $73 million. At number nine is Hulk number 181. So here we have that discussion. All of the CGC graded copies of Incredible Hulk number one or all of the CGC graded copies of Incredible Hulk 181. The difference is 2000 CGC graded copies for Incredible Hulk one, 17,000 CGC graded copies from Incredible Hulk 181, first full appearance of Wolverine. Total value at this point is roughly $93 million. It's not close between Hulk 181 and Hulk 1. Even though we're talking about number 10 and number 9, there's a $20 million difference at this point. Number 8, Amazing Spider-Man, number 1. Number 7, Captain America Comics, number 1. Number six, X-Men, number one. Number five, Superman, number one. Number four, Batman, number one. Number three, Amazing Fantasy, number 15. Number two is Detective Comics, number 27. And number one is Action Comics, number one. When I first ran this and the top three books were exactly 
the top three books you could ask anyone in the hobby about. Yeah. Uh, I thought that we had something there. I looked at something you did a couple years ago and AF15 was actually number one. So this is back in 2021. And that's because, and many of the viewers know this, that the Silver Age books just were on a tear in 2020 mm -hmm. and 2021. And so for a brief time, a, uh, Amazing Fantasy 15 took the top spot. But now, as you said, it's come back to the more traditional, whereas Action 1, Tech 27, and then um, AF15. Greg, next question. Were there any notable books lower than 25 that you'd like to mention? Maybe something that surprised you. Well, there is something that was very interesting to me, and I call it the Battle of the 252s. And so what am I talking about with 252? Well, first thing I'm talking about is Amazing Spider-Man 252. This is the first appearance of this black costume. We know that this eventually becomes Venom. Uh, and Amazing Spider-Man number 252 is compared to Action Comics number 252. What are we talking about here? First appearance of Supergirl. Very different in age. We're talking about 1980s here, 1950s for Supergirl. So we asked ourselves the question, which would you rather own every CGC graded copy of if you had to answer the battle of the 252s? Does anybody want to take a guess? Obviously, the answer is that one of these is worth more than the other in the calculation or the average copy times the number of copies graded. In this case, it is that Spider-Man with his black costume from the mid 1980s, uh, all the graded copies right now, 22,100 of them. Average price for the average grade, which is right around an 8.9, uh, would be about $200. So you can do the math there Multiply your 22000 by your $200, and you wind up with $4.4 .4 million. Uh, do a slight adjustment for the 1980s, because there are some high-value uh, copies of this at the 9.9 .9 or 9.8 range. Um, and you would wind up with an EMC value of $5.2 million. Spider-Man 252. All the copies of the first Supergirl uh, in Action Comics number 252 you will only end up at 4.4 million EMC value. Uh, and so what's actually happening with the Battle of the 252s is that Action Comics 252 comes in just outside the top 100 mm. of the EMC. It's at number 103. Mm. And just inside the top 100 at number 85, so just a little bit down from that top 100, Number 85 is Amazing Spider-Man 252. If you had to own all of one or the other, you would be almost a million dollars ahead uh, <laughs> if you owned all of the Spider-Man 252s instead of all of the Action 252s. One surprise to go with that is that the first black costume Spider-Man is Amazing Spider-Man 252. This is not the first black costume Spider-Man. This is Secret Wars. Several months later, where is this book on our top 100? It should not be, in my opinion, a bigger book than the first appearance of the black costume. But we, at this moment, find Marvel Super Heroes Secret Wars number eight, at number 66 with an EMC value of $6.8 million. More than a million dollars ahead of the first appearance of the black costume. The thing that has happened in the industry is that many sellers even today claim this is the first appearance of the black costume. It was months later. I don't know how many people have been tricked, might be the wrong word, but confused about the first appearance of the black costume for decades now. Um, so much so that the estimated market cap has this book much higher 
than the actual first appearance in Amazing Spider-Man 252. If I could own all of these books, uh, all of any one of these three books, I think I'd rather have all the Supergirls, even though the value is lower right now. I think in the long run, perhaps uh, we're talking about a 1950s comic. Uh, Supergirl is is just as big or bigger than Venom, which is really what the black suit is about, is the origins of Venom. Uh, and so in the long run, I think what we're seeing with the market cap is that you can make the arguments for yourself as a collector. You can use it and decide what you think. Perhaps you would look at it and say, it's a good time to buy that first Supergirl. It's too low. Or perhaps you would say, it's a good time to sell Secret Wars number eight. It's too high. Thanks, Greg. It's obvious you have a vendetta against Secret Wars number eight. <laughs> <laughs> well, I don't have too much of a vendetta because this is my copy and it is not for sale. So I'm not, <laughs> I'm not looking to cash in on it. We have not talked about this book today. Yeah. This is the most graded CGC. They've, they've graded more copies of this book than any other book in the history of CGC. 33,000? Am I pretty close? You are very close. It is now 35,000 copies that have been CGC graded. So if you could make the stack of 35,000 slabs of the exact same comic, all different grades, but the average grade is an 8.6. Uh, which right now would cost uh, around $400, $450. Um, you would have a total of $15 million, which you, when you adjust for 1988, the publication year, uh, you would get an EMC value of $17.9 million, which wow. would be number 26. Right outside our wow. top 25 is the most graded comic uh, in CGC history. One of the most amazing things I've ever seen in the hobby is something that Greg did. He put up a chart year by year from 1933 until 2023 and mapped out all the books for each year about their average grade and number of CGC copies and just tremendous insights for me um, as a collector. And if you want to watch that video, you can check it out here. Greg, thank you so much for being an awesome guest on this channel. And for everyone, thanks so much for watching and hope to see you around real soon.